Good morning, Ken. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. And yourself? Good, good. Good, good. Um, intervention is back. And I feel like all of us are excited because it's a it's an intense show to watch, and I feel it's very educational. But I also feel like all of us wish the show could go away because that means that addiction would be no more. It's a double-edged sword. Um Tell us about this season, because I understand you guys are dealing with something that you've really never dealt with before or on a bigger scale. Yeah, no, um, this season we're going to have our largest intervention ever with the most family members ever. And, you know, I, I'm hoping that the viewers get to see like, it, you know, addiction. If you look into the genogram or the family tree, you'll see that it hits numerous people in your in the generations and if you wait as long as this family waits it just gets really really bad and we're hoping that people tune in and see like oh my god look at how it's coming down this funnel in our family dynamics and let's do something and break the cycle earlier before it gets this bad so this is something that you're seeing. This is a generational addiction issue in this particular family. Yes, yes. It's been in the, you know, the family tree for many generations, but it just got to the very bottom of it. It like funneled out where you'll see numerous family members in the same family have addiction and they're all using together. It's so devastating. It's heartbreaking to watch. It's devastating. And my hope is when you tune in in this season, you're going to be able to see that you could do something before it gets this bad. Don't you can let break it the cycle. break the cycle. Exactly. Now, do you do you notice a age that you are um, intervening on? I mean, do you notice is it, you know, teenagers? Is it 50 plus? Is it 30 year olds? Is there a is there a commonality in age that you're seeing where people are like, this is the time when it needs to happen because they have reached this point in their life? Unfortunately, no, um, you know, except like that 27 club, right? You know, you, we all heard of that where, oh yeah, you know, if they're, if they're 26 turning 27, you better intervene because a lot of people die at that age and you don't want them as, as long as you're intervening during that year, Hopefully they'll get past it and they won't, you know, be a part of that club. But, um, you know, I don't really see, you know, I, the oldest I've intervened on was an 82 year old, you know, the youngest was a 13 year old. So it's all over the map. And we're talking all kinds of addiction. Uh, I mean, drug, alcohol, just all kinds of addictions that you guys deal with. Totally. Yeah. Every, uh, you know, the 13 year old was marijuana and, you know, the brother was 17 years old and he was, you know, using marijuana that switched to pills. So they said, let's stop it at the 13 instead of waiting. You know, the family was pretty enlightened to say, wow, look at the progression with him. We don't want her going down that road. So let's break it now. Wow. And the 82 was alcohol. You know, she was addicted to alcohol and, you know, her husband just died and she was drinking herself to death and her kids didn't want to lose her. So it's all. all you, I mean, you can understand. And that's the tough thing about addiction is that you listen to these stories, you hear how they started, why they started, the reasons behind it. And you can understand it, but you also want to stop it. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping when people watch this season of A&E, they're really looking at, you know, um, the, they, they've been telling the story for so many years, like when they were a little girl. Remember when they start the show when they were a little girl, little boy, this is what they were like. Their family's talking about outgoing, friendly, you know, mm -hmm. loving, wanting to do this as a, as a career, you know, when they grow up. And then they go into what happened you know, where it started getting, you know, weird or different, and then what it's like now for them. I'm hoping that people in this season really listen to the what happened and intervene then. Don't wait until it gets way up here. Intervene here where you could see it and say, 
I don't want to wait like that family did with the 13 year old. We're seeing the track, the same process with the brother. We're going to see it with the daughter. So we're going to intervene now. And that's what I'm hoping happens this season. How do you decompress after something like this? Because I feel like this would be emotionally and physically draining to try and help someone who, I mean, some of these people are pretty far gone and God bless, you know, you're, you're able to help them out, but how do you, how do you decompress after dealing with being with that many people and that heavy of a topic? Um, I think to be honest, it's kind of like, um, my, my trauma response, you know, um, as you know, dealing with my trauma, I never let things sink in. Like I would take it in and I would feel it, but I wouldn't let it sink in. And that, that, that guard has been a, a trauma response or reaction, you know, that I did for a little kid to protect myself. But I think I'm able to tap into that and not let it sink into the core of my being. Because a lot of people, they let it sink in. Oh, yeah. You know, it just eats them up and it just tears them apart. But I'm able to feel the pain, meet them where they're at, but not let it get into the core of my being. Now, July, which is mm -hmm. next month, I can't believe, is your anniversary of sobriety. Yeah, 33 years. Oh, congratulations. That's so incredible. And God bless for taking your situation and turning it into helping other people and you know what they're going through. And I think that that is such a huge part in helping in this process. Yeah. And I, I know the darkness, you know, like when we're in our addiction, we yeah. think in our addiction, like life cannot get any better. Things are freaking amazing. Like I don't want to stop what I'm doing because everything is perfect in my life. But meanwhile, things are falling on top of you and they continue to pile up on top of you. And, you know, you get to this point where you're crying alone all the time. You're, you're in so much emotional pain and you can't put your finger on it. And you think it may be this or it may be that. And I know that darkness, I know that pain, and that's where I connect with them is I, I go into that pain and I say, yeah, everything is all perfect up here, but really inside there's some stuff that you, that's not right. And let me walk you through that because if we walk through that, you could really live that high without any drugs. And that's my goal is getting them to that place. Mm. I think that it's important for them to know that they have someone who has felt that too. And I think a lot of us, we always feel sympathy for the families because it's, it's awful. It's awful what it does to them, but my God, the empathy and the sympathy that you're able to give to the people who are going through it, because it hurts them just as much when they're coming out of it, when they're dealing with it, when they're facing it, when they're talking to their family. I mean, it's, it's, Oh, it's just heart wrenching. I feel like Kleenex needs to sponsor a and E's entire season of intervention. Um, but I just, I think it's so incredible what you do. And I'm so thankful that you have taken, like I said, your, your issues and you have turned it into something so beautiful and so helpful. Yeah. It's just a passion. You know, like you said, it's when you see like the, the, the person with the, the identified person or the person with the addiction, the one that's suffering out there that the family wants to intervene on, you know, they're on painkillers. Alcohol is a painkiller. Bills, meth is a, you know, they're on painkillers. So they're not feeling that rock bottom. They're not feeling the, the pain that the dysfunction in the family dynamics is causing. But the family members, they're not on the painkillers. They're feeling it in real time. And that's where my heart really goes out to because they're, they're like, it's killing them watching their loved one commit slow suicide. Mm -hmm. And they've tried everything. Yeah. They've tried everything. And to give them hope and to give them a new way of trying things and giving them, I call it a family realignment realigning the family dynamics and system 
and creating new ways to communicate to your loved one in order to get them the help they need. That's the gift. Well, how can we watch Intervention? Oh, on Monday nights, 9 p.m. on A&E. Um, again, the premiere is starting tonight. We're very excited. Wow. And, um, you know, please tune in and don't, millions of people out there know somebody that's suffering. This season will give you the tools to not wait that long. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Great advice. Ken, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to talk with you again. And I just, I continue to be well, my friend. Thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you. So good to see you. Take care of yourself. Bye, you too.